ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين السلام عليكم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All the praises is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessings and salutations be unto Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Amma ba'd Today I'm going to speak about what Islam is What does the Muslim believe? You know Islam isn't a new religion but the same truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed through all his prophet to every people in every nation. Islam is the name of that religion that Muslims follow. People who practice Islam are called Muslim. Likewise, just like those who practice Christian, Christianity are called Christians. But the literal and lexical meaning of Islam means submission. Islam comes from the root Arabic word silm, which is also having the same root words of salam, which means peace. So Islam is a natural way of life that encourages one to give due attention to the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. Islam teaches that it is through the doing of good deeds and seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that souls find true happiness and peace. In fact, Islam isn't a religion in narrow sense used by secular humanists in the West. <clears throat> but it is a universal and eternal religion made known through prophets to every nation or people <clears throat> since the first human race, since the human race first began. This religion of Islam lays great emphasis on uncompromising monotheism and strict adherence to its creed and its method of worship. It enjoins submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and urges every person to follow as closely as possible the exemplary way of life of Prophet Muhammad the last of the prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, Allah defines that the only purpose for which he created mankind is to worship him. Islam recognizes that humankind has free choice in whether to obey or disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But ultimately, we will be accountable, we will be held accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next life for the choices that we make in this life. Islam is named after the action of submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's comments and Will and not a person, other religions are often named after a person. Like, for instance, Christianity is named after Christ. Judaism is named after the tribe of Judah. And Buddhism is named after Buddha. Islam isn't named after Muhammad because Islam existed before him. The masses of previous prophets such as Adam, Abraham, Nuh and Moses was to submit to Allah. That means Islam. Hence the message of Islam didn't start with the Prophet Muhammad It started with Adam and continued until today. 
With the passing of time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send new prophets and messengers to remind mankind of his message. To worship him alone, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, him is the last of this prophet. Islam deals with every aspect of life, spiritual and physical. Its jurisprudence is based on creed, instruction, worship and ordinances dealing with social, economic and political transaction. Because Islam is a perfect way of life, it's a divine only way of life, it enjoins the maintenance of a refined standard of character. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said about what Islam is, which is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim as a conversation between Prophet Muhammad and Jibril Islam. Islam is testifying that there is no true God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah performing the prayers, paying poor due or obligatory Charity means Jakka, observing the fast, Siyam, of the month of Ramadan and performing the pilgrimage if we can afford it. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed through his messenger that Islam is built on five pillars. What are they? Number one is the witness of faith means giving sahada number two five obligatory prayers number three the poor due or obligatory charity means jakat fasting or observing psalm and the final one is the pilgrimage the hajj now coming to the point about what do muslims believe Muslims believe in six points. What are they? Firstly, Muslims believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the universe. The Arabic term of God is Allah. Sometimes Muslims prefer to use name Allah over God because Allah linguistically doesn't have a gender and can't be made plural. The English name God could become goddess or gods. The main message of the Al-Quran is that Allah is one. He has no partner, child or helper. Then Muslims believe in angels. There are many angels that all obey Allah. Unlike humans, angels don't have free choice, free will and must obey all the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Different angels have different tasks. For example, uh, like the angel Jibril salam, was responsible for communicating the message of Allah to human prophets and messengers. The angel Mikhail was responsible for rain. Angels also help and assist the mumin, the believers, in times of difficulty. Then, Muslims believe in all prophets and messengers. A Muslim is required to believe in Adam, Nuh, Abraham, Moses, Daud, Joseph, Jesus, and Muhammad. Peace be upon all of them. They all came with the same masses to worship one Allah and not associate any partners with him. Muslims also believe in all previous scriptures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to his prophets and messengers. Moses was given the Torah, Abraham was given the scrolls and Jesus was given the Angel. With the exception of the Quran, no previous scripture is completely preserved in its original form. With time, Many of these scriptures were lost or corrupted. Al-Quran was sent as the final statement and it functions as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's final message to mankind. 
Then Muslims believe in the hereafter, after life. There will be a day of judgment where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge, hold people accountable for their actions in this world. Those who did good will enter paradise and those who did evil will enter, will either be forgiven or punished in hell. Everyone will be compensated for their actions in this world. Lastly, Muslims believe in Allah's divine will and decree. Allah has knowledge of all things that will happen. He doesn't force humans to make decisions. We only choose what we want to do. However, there are certain things that Allah decreed and are outside of our control. These things include the time and place we were born, where and when we will die, and anything that happens that is outside our control. Muslims submit to these things as part of Allah's decree and will. Another belief in these six items is what makes a man Muslim. One might not practice Islam perfectly. They may commit sins and may make mistakes. But as long as they have this, these beliefs, they are considered to be a Muslim. Put differently, these are the most basic requirements of being a Muslim. Now, this is very vital to tell about. Does Islam tolerate other beliefs, other religions? The Quran says, Allah forbids you not with regards to those who fight you, not for faith, nor drive you out of your homes from dealing kindly and justly with them. For Allah loves those who are just. It is mentioned in Al-Quran, chapter number 60, verse number 8. So it is one of the function of Islamic law to protect the privileged status of minorities. And this is why non-Muslim places of worship have flourished all over the Islamic world. History provides many examples of Muslim tolerance towards other faiths. When the Caliph Umar anhu, entered Jerusalem in the year 634, Islam granted freedom of worship to all religious communities in the city. Islamic law also permits non-Muslim minorities to set up their own courts which implement family laws drawn up by the minorities themselves. Islam may seem exotic or even extreme in the modern world. Perhaps this is because religion doesn't dominate every life in the West today. Whereas Muslims have religion always uppermost in their minds and make no divisions between secular and sacred. They believe that the divine law, the Sharia, should be taken very seriously, which is why issues related to religion are still so important. Islam places great importance in the belief that the soul gives life to human body. Likewise, in its absence, the human body dies and disintegrates. However, the soul is eternal and will be reunited with the body on the day of resurrection when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise everyone to answer for their deeds on earth. Islam encourages the individuals to focus on keeping the soul healthy through the remembrance, obedience and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There should be a correct balance in strengthening the soul and not overindulging with the pleasures of the body. Now in concluding remarks, we are going to say Islam is the religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for mankind. He said, which is mentioned in Al-Quran chapter number 3 verse number 19, 
द रिलीजन दैट इज एक्सेप्टेड बाई अल्लाह इज इस्लाम दिस मीन्स दैट मैसेज इज यूनिवर्सल ड्यू टू दिस फैक्ट मैन डजेंट नीड टू डेवलप और डिवाइस न्यू लॉज to suit every age and lifestyle it's a way of life that affects every aspects of man's life social and the political economic etc islam has a solution to every problem regardless of its nature and gravity it's a divine message which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam to convey to the mankind to man he also revealed the quran his last book which comprises an unalterable constitution now do you have read this booklet and become more acquainted with the central principles of islam it's up to you to make the choice everyone is headed for the same worldly end but the route one chooses determines the other worldly destination the destination in the here after whoever seeks a religion other than islam it will never be accepted of him and in the here after he will be one of the losers it is mentioned in chapter number 3 of al quran in verse number 85 moreover it is mentioned also in al quran chapter number 39 in verse number 22 this is he whose breast allah has opened to islam so that he is in light from his lord so o to those whose hearts are hardened against remembrance of allah subhanahu wa taala they are in plain error islam sets out for human beings a vision which is strikingly simple yet completely logical indeed why would the creator of the universe should shroud in mystery the main masses that he wants human kind to understand the own one key to winning paradise in the hereafter how then would he expect human kind to arrive at the truth it's clear that human beings must revert to their basic instinct regarding the creator of the universe they must say the layers of indoctrinated ideologies and man made teachings that covers that instinct human kind must reclaim its birth right it must reclaim islam one hadith was narrated by imam muslim it is mentioned in sai muslim hadith number 145 it is narrated from abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu who said the messenger of allah said peace be upon him islam began as something strange and will revert to being strange as it began so give glad tidings to the strangers it is a very important hadith what the prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam told islam began as something strange and will revert to being strange as it began so give glad tidings to the strangers al sindi said in hasiya ibn maza strange refers to the small numbers of its adherents the basic meaning of gharib a stranger as being far from one's homeland and will revert to being strange refers to the small number of those who will adhere to its teachings even though its followers are many so give glad tidings to the strangers it is mean it means that those who follow its commands tuba means glad tidings has been interpreted as meaning paradise or great tree in paradise this shows that supporting islam and following its commands may require leaving one's homeland and being patient in bearing the difficulties of being a stranger as was the case in the beginning 
in Sir Sahih Muslim, and now be quoted as saying concerning the meaning of this hadith, Islam began among a few individuals, then it spread and prevailed, then it will reduce in numbers until there are only a few left as it was in the beginning. It says in Fatwa Al-Lazna al daima in chapter number 2, page number 170, the meaning of this hadith is that Islam began as something strange. When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, called people to Islam, but no one responded except a few here and there. At that time, it was something strange because its people were like strangers amongst others and they were few in numbers and weak. In contrast to the great numbers and strength of their enemies who persecuted the Muslims, then some of them migrated to Abyssinia, fleeing for the sake of their religion from tribulation and to save themselves from prosecution and oppression. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, migrated at Allah's command to Medina. After suffering intense persecution and in the hope that Allah will give him people to support him in his call and support Islam. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled his hopes, granted victory to his troops and supported his slaves. The Islamic State was established and Islam spread with the help of Allah throughout the globe. Allah made the word of Kufr lowest and the word of Allah is uppermost. For Allah is almighty, all wise and honor, power and glory belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his messenger, peace be upon him, and to the believers. This continued for a long time, then division and dissent spread among the Muslims and weakness and failure increased gradually. Until Islam once again became something strange as it was in the beginning. But this is not because of their small numbers, because at the time they will be many. Rather, it's because they don't adhere to their religion or cling to the book of their Lord and the teachings of the messenger of, of Allah, peace be upon him, apart from those whom Allah wills. So, they become distracted and turn to competing in worldly matters like those who came before them and they fight amongst themselves for leadership. So, the enemies of Islam found a way in and they colonized their lands, humiliated their people and treated them badly. This is the way in which Islam returned to being strange as it was in the beginning. A number of scholars including Sayyid Muhammad Rashid Rida thought that this hadith give glad tidings of a second victory of Islam after it becomes something strange again. They base, they base this on the metaphor used by Prophet when he said, will revert to being strange at, as it began. So just as following the initial strangeness and alienation, the Muslims who are victorious and Islam spread, this will happen again after the second period of strangeness, strangeness and alienation. This view is more likely to be correct and is supported by what is proven in Hadith about the Mahdi and the descent of Isha at the end of time when Islam will spread and the Muslims will be victorious and Kufr and the Kafirs will be defeated. And Allah is the source of strength. May Allah send blessings and peace upon our Prophet Muhammad and upon his family and companions. Thank you all people for watching and listening this lecture about Islam. Jazakallah khair. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
وانت شكر روحي وصار الدمع يجري 